uh, hello everyone uh, welcome to another video lecture in convolution codes uh, with uh, a plethora of advantages of uh, convolution codes uh, uh, it has become famous over the years i uh, will try to understand its uh, history and applications in order to appreciate uh, uh, the advantages of convolution codes uh, so uh, uh, we know that around uh, 1948 uh, shannon founded the information theory and then subsequently around uh, 19, 19, 1955 uh, elias uh, came with convolution codes uh, it is said that elias is uh, the founder of uh, convolution codes and around 1960s uh, reed solomon code and ldbc codes uh, were discovered and around uh, 61 63 uh, wozencraft and fano uh, came up with uh, sequential decoding of convolution codes uh, which allowed uh, to decode convolution codes uh, uh, with using very large memory orders uh, around 1960s uh, uh, and 68 uh, in particular to that uh, Viterbi algorithms uh, became famous uh, which used maximum likelihood uh, algorithm for uh, decoding of convolution codes and around uh, 1974 uh, uh, BCG codes uh, uh, algorithms were uh, proposed uh, in around 1960s and early 70s, uh, convolution codes and uh, concatenated codes found application for uh, deep space communications. And around 1977, uh, coding and modulation was combined uh, together uh, to design trellis coded modulation. And uh, they subsequently uh, found a lot of application uh, uh, in designing uh, coding for, uh, in particular to modems. Uh, and then finally, around 1993, uh, turbo codes uh, were discovered uh, and LDBC codes uh, uh, were rediscovered. And then uh, around late 90s uh, onwards, all uh, deep 2000s, uh, people started uh, proposing uh, 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 the uh, higher versions of uh, convolution codes uh, and applied to various standards. Uh, and they found applications uh, uh, in many of uh, uh, modern uh, or uh, uh, today's uh, communication standards. Uh, this is a brief outline of how things evolved uh, over the uh, last half century. Uh, to look into the applications of convolution codes, uh, uh, as early as 1968, uh, Pioneer Mission, uh, which uh, implemented uh, space probes uh, to study solar wind, uh, solar magnetic field, uh, and uh, cosmic rays and so on. Uh, they used a rate of uh, uh, rate uh, half uh, convolution codes, uh, which uh, which had a constraint uh, length of uh, 20. I will uh, understand what is this constraint length. Uh, and uh, with the constraint length of 20, there were two power 20 states uh, uh, in uh, in uh, encoder, and they used sequential decoding at the receiver. Uh, which uh, the, with a uh, coding gain of roughly around 3.3 dB, uh, which produced a, a probability of error around 0 0.005. Uh, this was one of the uh, earliest or the first uh, introduction of uh, convolution codes, uh, which are uh, which used uh, practically. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so in around uh, 1970s, uh, NASA standards were developed. Uh, it used a concatenated coding scheme, which used both coding and modulation in the same algorithm, uh, uh, which was based on rate half. And there were 64 state uh, inner convolution code. And it was uh, 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 described as 255, 223, 33 RS uh, uh, code. Uh, so with this outer code and with uh, inner 64 state convolution code, uh, with the overall rate of uh, half, uh, NASA introduced a standard in around 1970s. Uh, it provided around uh, uh, it provided coding gain around 7.3 decibels at a coding rate at a bit rate of 10. Uh, another uh, big development was in uh, uh, Galileo's mission. Uh, when the uh, primary antenna failed uh, to deploy. Uh, there was an uh, elaborate concatenated coded scheme which used a 2 power 14 uh, state uh, uh, convolution code assigner uh, and uh, Reed Solomon code as outer code and a big Viterbi decoding algorithm, uh, shortly known as uh, BVD, was proposed uh, uh, which uh, uh, could work uh, over such a large number of states. 
uh, it was a very impressive step uh, forward in terms of a coding application uh, because it was able to salvage uh, this mission because of this very nice concatenated code uh, and it was uh, very successful uh, it uh, deployed uh, with a uh, coding gain of around 10.2 decibels uh, and uh, it was able to achieve uh, uh, arbitrate as close to 10 power minus 7 uh, and hence it was a very very uh, great achievement uh, in the development of uh, convolution codes and uh, and finally as i said uh, uh, from early 2000s uh, onwards uh, uh, this uh, turbo codes and ldbc codes uh, uh, were uh, found and they find applications in uh, uh, deep space to mobile communications uh, tv broadcasting standards and things like that uh, now another area where error control coding and this uh, convolution code uh, uh, made a major impact was encoding for uh, modems uh, around uh, mid 80s uh, hunger box uh, came with uh, how to combine coding and modulation and it came up with uh, trellis coded modulation so it was a concatenated uh, coding technique and uh, uh, these um, codes were heavily used in a design uh, uh, to design coding schemes for uh, for data transmission uh, basically over uh, a public switch telephone network uh, so some of the applications uh, have listed uh, here uh, so initially we had 1994 uh, around uh, uh, so initially it started with uh, v32 standard it was around 9.6 kilobits per second transmission uh, it was uh, uh, using eight state code and then finally it was developed with 33.6 kilobits per second transmission which used uh, 16 uh, state uh, four dimensional trellis coded modulation scheme so this was uh, a modem standard uh, in the ps over psdn uh, network and there was uh, this uh, optional 32 state four dimensional trellis code uh, which uh, all specified in the standard but when we progress to digital backbones um, then uh, there was no need for these codes. Uh, so V90 and V92 standards, which was uh, usually uh, utilized for digital standards, were superseded by uh, V34 uh, uh, standard. It was not necessary as there was a lot of uh, uh, successful of uh, V34 standards uh, and it was uh, phased out. Uh, now, currently, uh, these uh, uh, techniques are also used for high-speed wireline modems uh, like ADCs. Uh, and other wireless applications and of course turbo codes and uh, uh, its variants uh, also find applications here are uh, gsm uh, 3g uh, uh, lte and uh, of course 5g uh, use convolution codes of, uh, of around uh, in particular to gsm it uses a convolution code of memory 4 and rate half uh, i have just listed uh, some of the applications of turbo codes uh, in the uh, in recent times uh, in standards uh, uh, ranging from uh, uh, video broad uh, digital video broadcasting uh, to third generation wireless standard to d space exploration uh, to satellite uh, communication applications and so on and you can see there are these binary turbo codes uh, uh, that we talked uh, binary turbo code essentially uses uh, uh, rate uh, k by n uh, which is greater than 1 and there are additional bit that have been added in some of the cases for termination of uh, uh, this encoder. Uh, they are called as tail bits. So, and this termination uh, comes with uh, either a tailing or circular. Okay. Uh, and in some cases uh, where you see the circular thing, uh, they have used the circular recoveries uh, encoders so that uh, uh, what they called what is known as tail biting encoders. Uh, their starting and ending states are same. Uh, so that this is like circulation tr 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 trills so the so they do not need any termination bits uh, and this so these are uh, various applications uh, and standards uh, which uses uh, modern convolution coding techniques thank you